Sibidi, 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 sibidi. Hoo hoo, hoo hoo, ballistic and oh yeah, huh, speed of projectile. The main objective of this lab is to study the law of conservation of momentum and the elements of projectile motion, in particular, to determine the initial velocity of a projectile by means of ballistic pendulum, and to check this determination by measurements of its range of, and vertical distance of fall during its flight. Translation. Find the initial velocity of projectile using conservation of momentum and then the conservation of mechanical energy. Yeah, that's, that's it. Let's go ahead and define our terms real quick using formulas because formulas are fantastic in physics. So we're going to define momentum. P equals mv. Woohoo! Yeah! Now, mechanical energy is defined um, to be kinetic energy the energy of motion plus potential energy, the energy of position. So it's like, I've got the potential to do something. Ah! Now in formula form, we say that Me is equal to Ke plus Pe, or to be more specific, we say 1 half mv squared plus mgh, or 1 half the mass of the object times the velocity of the object squared plus the mass of the object times the acceleration due to gravity times the height it's been displaced. Okay, so now we're going to be figuring things out using a ballistic pendulum. So first we're going to go ahead and uh, look at the uh, conservation of momentum. We're going to define things through conservation of momentum. So we're going to have our pendulum arm and we're going to have a ball and it is on the ballistic pendulum. It's on a spring-loaded gun. We're going to fire it. The ball is going to be shot into the um, shot into the pendulum arm and what's going to happen is the momentum of the ball is going to be transferred into the pendulum arm and then it's going to be shot up and it will be caught by this like ratchet steppy thing. Right? Okay, and then it's going to be caught at its maximum height. Okay, so so by conservation of momentum, we can say that um, the initial momentum where the ball is launched is equal to the final momentum where the ball come in, comes in contact with the uh, pendulum arm, and it's like captured, so it's an inelastic collision. Formula form says that little m times little v, just the mass and the speed of the ball itself, is equal to the mass... Um, is equal to the mass of the ball plus the mass of the pendulum arm times the speed of the ball arm combo wonderfulness. Now let's take it one step further and let's go ahead and look at the mechanical energy aspects of what's happening. So momentum and uh, conservation of momentum, awesome, but put to the side. Now we will bring out mechanical energy. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so we have mechanical energy and we're going to say that its initial position is when the ball has been caught by the pendulum arm and it's moving up to its final position. So mechanical energy initial is equal to kinetic energy plus zero. Okay, so our potential energy is going to be zero because we are defining it to be zero at that point. So our initial mechanical energy will just be the kinetic energy of both the pendulum arm and the ball. So it's going to be one half times little m plus big M times the velocity of the pendulum arm with the ball. So it's going to be that big V again, and that's going to be squared. Okay. And then the final mechanical energy is going to be when it's caught on that ratchet thing. And so that's going to be um, me. F, so mechanical energy uh, final. And that's going to be equal to uh, zero plus the potential energy because our uh, energy of motion has become zero and it's all been moved to potential energy because it's the energy of the position. And that's going to be little m plus big M, the mass of the ball plus the mass of the pendulum arm times g, the acceleration due to gravity, and height. Okay, and that height is going to be equal to the amount of change in the y direction for the pendulum arm. Okay, so it starts at its initial position when it's not, when it does not have the ball in it yet and it's just hanging out, and then it moves up and gets caught at its maximum height. So now we can say by conservation of mechanical energy, mechanical energy initial is equal to mechanical energy final. So with what we've just defined, we're going to bring those two things together with awesomeness. So our um, 
ME initial is equal to 1 half little m plus big M times big V squared equal to our mechanical energy final, which is little m plus big M times acceleration due to gravity times height. And so to simplify that, we can go ahead and uh, cross out the masses because little m plus big M on both sides means we can you know, just get rid of it to simplify things because we're awesome. And what we want to do is we want to solve for that big V for reasons in which I will explain to you in a moment. So we're going to solve for big V and because it's on one side and it's squared, we can go ahead and be awesome and say that big V is equal to or, I'm sorry, the velocity of the pendulum arm with the ball is equal to the square root of two times the acceleration due to gravity times height. So, now we can use that equation where we solved for velocity of the ball and the pendulum arm and our conservation of momentum, bringing it back, bringing it back, conservation of momentum equation where we had um, little little v times m, so the mass and velocity of the ball, just the ball, is equal to mass of the ball plus mass of the pendulum arm times that big V. So then we can solve for the initial velocity of just the ball and get the velocity of the ball equal to mass of the ball plus mass of the pendulum arm divided by mass of the ball times square root of 2 times the acceleration due to gravity times the height that it finally ends at. Okay. Now, now we also in our objective wanted to talk about, you know, um, solving for the initial velocity in a different way. So we were going to solve for it using the vertical displacement and the uh, horizontal displacement. Well, basically, the we're going to shoot the ball um, across the lab and it's going to fall a specific height and it's going to go a specific distance. Cool? Yeah, I said it. We are going to shoot metal balls across the lab. Ah! Okay, so now let's get to the uh, physics of what's going on here. Okay, so we have our system where it's uh, our ball is going to travel a distance of x and it's going to fall a distance of y. Our coordinate system is going to be defined as our y going down being positive. Okay. Now for projectile motion, our uh, acceleration in the x direction will be me 0 meters per second squared and our acceleration in the y direction is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. And because we're saying that our y direction going down is positive, our acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared while normally being negative is going to be positive. Okay, so the equation of kinematics that we will be using is x equals v naught t plus one half a t squared. And so in our x direction, we can go ahead and plug in all of our x components of awesomeness. And because we know that acceleration in the x um, direction is going to be zero, our calculation, our formula will just simplify down to x is equal to the initial velocity of the ball times time. And for our y, we are awesomeness and greatness. Oh yes, we're going to say that it is the same equation just in the y direction and because we know that our initial velocity uh, in the y direction is going to be zero this whole thing will cancel out and our y equation f will uh, simplify down to one half uh, g times times squared. Now g is just because it's the acceleration in the y direction. Okay. Now for our y equation we're going to go ahead and solve for t. Yeah, okay. So we're going to solve for t so we can go ahead and plug it into our x equation where we can solve for our initial velocity. So t is equal to the square root of 2y divided by g, the acceleration due to gravity. And because we can go ahead and use our x equation to solve for the initial velocity of our ball, which is what we want to do, we will go ahead and say that v, the initial velocity of the ball, is equal to x over time. And we can go ahead and plug in our y equation where we solved for time into our x equation where we're solving for the initial velocity and say that v, the initial velocity of the ball, is equal to x times the square root of g over 2y. At the end of the lab, I will warn you, there's a small derivation, but it's okay. You've got it. You'll be great. And then that's it. That's the lab. Mm.